Uh, welcome everybody uh, on the iCurve conference. Uh, my name is Shimon Chudoba, I'm the CEO of iCurve Alliance and it's my honor to be your host and, and guide for, for this event. So uh, what, will, what will be going on today? First of all, amazing keynotes from the great speakers that we have today. So this is what we are starting with uh, in, in a couple of minutes. Then we will take a photo all together and uh, you will get a lunch. Also, there's one hour, so you will have enough time to chat with the others, a little bit networking, and this is why we are here. Um, then, presentations of uh, iCRF Alliance members, so you will see the ready products, ready solutions based on iCRF. Another short uh, coffee break, and at the, at the end of this program, we will go through like some promising projects uh, usually based on, on, on IQRF. Uh, then you will have like one and a half hour uh, break. So this is what you can use for going through the, through the marketplace, which is uh, on the other side of this room. Uh, you, can, you can network, you can talk to your colleagues and new partners. And also you can relax a little bit because at 6 p.m. we will meet in front of the, in front of the hotel. We will take uh, taxis and minibuses and we will go uh, to the to the river to the boat, and we will have like two or three hours uh, right around the uh, around the Prague city center on the boat uh, with a little bit of, of drink and, and good food. So I believe we will enjoy it. Uh, then when we finish, you can go back to the hotel or you can continue uh, to the center of Prague to have a little bit of uh, fun and, and nightlife. So this is the program for today. Tomorrow. Uh, it will be more technical, it will be more about discussions and going a little bit deeper into the, let's say, technical, uh, technical issues. Uh, afterwards, also a couple of presentations of uh, our uh, iCurve Smart School program. We will have uh, speakers from, from universities and also from the guys who took the, the part in, uh, in the iCurve Wireless Challenge 2 and then lunch break and then rather like a discussions, questions and uh, then at 2 p.m. Uh, this event will be, will be over but definitely you can stay, stay longer, we will be around. We have here technicians, business people so you can discuss whatever you need regarding the IQRF. So uh, where we are coming from, uh, just one year ago there was the first uh, alliance meeting, the kickoff meeting of the iCurve Alliance. So there were in that time 23 members and on the event we had around like 30, 35 people. Uh, today the iCurve Alliance uh, is getting bigger and bigger. We have microchip on board, we have O2. So those are the corporations that we are really proud of to have on board. We have currently 61 members from U US uh, through, through Europe up to India, so this is like an amazing progress that we've done over the last year. We have uh, universities on board, we have high schools, uh, there are innovation centers, also like business partners. So this community is really, really getting bigger and bigger and actually you are the community and you can see here how many you are. So on the conference, I'm really proud to have those uh, like big corporations are uh, here uh, providing their presentations like, like O2, uh, Intel, IBM and Microsoft and also the, also the others. So this is amazing set of, uh, of companies and, and speakers. So today there are more than 120 participants. Uh, some of them are still on the way and will sh show up later on. There are more than 70, uh, 70 organizations right among you and from more than 15 countries. So we believe this is one of the most significant uh, smart city, internet of things, smart home, even in the Czech Republic, that's for sure. So I wish you that you learned something here, uh, that you have great ideas, that you find the right partners, and also that you have a little bit of fun. Uh, so it's not just, just only about the business. So. So this was just the, the short introduction of the event. Now we will start with the keynote. I'm, I'm really glad that I can, I can open this. So um, we, were, we were discussing how we can like, set up the, the line of this event. And 
uh, we wanted to provide some, some expectations from the smart homes and smart cities. And I was thinking about some like futuristic visions, like what the house can do itself and what the smart cities can do themselves. But then I look back into my own household and I realize that it's not so, that we are not so far basically. So, so I will tell you my story uh, from my family and my house, like where, what are the expectations from the, from the end users? So about two years ago, I moved to this small town close to Brno, like 3,000 3, people. I, I bought a very little house and uh, this is where we moved. But to, when, when we moved in, we realized that actually there's like too hot in the, in the living room. So we bought this with Bind and the company that installed it, they gave us this remote controller. And about half a year later, when we put on the terrace, like we realized that we need another blinder because it was still too hot. So we got another remote controller, right? I asked them like, could I get just one remote controller? And they said, yeah, but it would be like more expensive than have two remote controllers. I asked, okay, and can I control it like from my, uh, from my cell phone? And they say, yeah, but, but that would be su su super expensive and we don't do it usually. I said, okay, fine. And then I, then I also needed like light uh, on the terrace, uh, but uh, there was just a power cable, you know, like uh, nothing to control. And I wanted to control also from, from the inside. So, but I wasn't able to buy such a lamp on the market, right? So fortunately, I work for a company doing wireless, right? So, so the guys in our workshop, they prepared me, uh, this remote controller, so now I can control it remotely, which is great, but uh, still I don't have, I, I have no chance to control it from my cell phone. And I have like three remote controllers just to control my small terrace, right? That doesn't make sense to you, like it doesn't say, make sense to me. One year ago we started working with Protronix, great company. Uh, I borrowed this CO2 sensor and I realized that not only in, in the room of our kids, the CO2 level is too high, but even in the whole house. The CO2 was basically still uh, too high, so we started to open the window and uh, yeah, we thought uh, that this would help, but uh, then we realized that not all our neighbors are actually using the right sources of, of energy for, for their heating, right? So this is how sometimes it looked like. So, and I wanted uh, to get the information like what's the pollution in, in, our, uh, in our town. But I wasn't able, right? I wasn't able to get the information, okay, should I close the window or should I open the window, right? So, no information, basically. You can guess what is under this cover. What do you think? Yeah, there's a water meter, actually, right? So, so what I have to do when, when I want to check the, the, the water status, it's like I have to take this out, right? To pick up this heavy, heavy cover and, and actually read two digits. Right? And we are living in 21st century. Again, like, it doesn't make too much sense to me. Another story, right? Uh, usually most of the people here in Czech Republic, they drink water from taps. But then they did analysis and they realized that actually the NOx in the water was over limit. And actually the municipality sent out the newsletter. But the thing is that we got the newsletter like three weeks later, then this happened, right? So my kids and my pregnant wife was still drinking this water which is like out of the limits, right? So what we did, we, we bought like, I don't know, 50 bottles of, of water so they can drink like a uh, like good quality water. And then we got another newsletter that for last two weeks it's already fine. Okay, so we actually, like now I have really truly like 40 of those bottles at my home without, without reason because, because actually the water is uh, okay again. Okay, so who of you have like similar troubles or problems? Like raise your hand. Okay, so I can, I can see some potential here, definitely. Uh, so, and my question is like, where is the IoT? Eh? Where are the things that I can get connected to the internet, right? Where is the smart home? I'm like, I have like a standard household, right? Uh, so very like average, I would say, and I, I don't have smart home. Where is the smart city providing the media information about, uh, about the parking, about the pollution, about the quality of water, right? It's, it's, it's not there. 
And where is the smart grid, right? That I can actually control the consumption of water, electricity, and so on. I must say that it's not there yet for the end, con end consumer as, as I am, right? So, so this is pretty it's actually set for the, for the consumer that you cannot go and, and buy the stuff, even if you want. So then I was thinking about the expectations, what the, what the end users have. And I think it's, it's pretty trivial. It's, it's nothing like super futuristic or uh, difficult. What the customers want, they want flexibility, right? So I want to buy any device, basically anywhere, right? Uh, I, I want to buy it online, I want to buy it in some hip, hip, hypermarket, supermarket, wherever, uh, and from whatever uh, provider. The second thing, I want a reasonable cost, right? I don't want my smart to make my home smart for like 10, 20, 30,000 euro. It doesn't make any sense, right? So I want really to buy this stuff, put it together, and very simply get it connected and have it up and running within minutes. Right? This is this is what uh, what I want, what I need. Uh, I don't I don't want a special company coming to my house and do the installation for two two weeks. It doesn't make sense. Okay. So this is why we are doing this conference, why we are running the IQRF Alliance, because well, we can put together the companies the developers, manufacturers, system integrators that actually ch can change this situation, right? And like, frankly speaking, I have, uh, um, uh, this is what the Alliance is doing and we are definitely open to, uh, to cooperate, not only within the Alliance, but especially to cooperate with the other technologies because the iCurve is ne not the only technology which is, which is uh, ready uh, to be used. And we are also definitely open to work with the new communities. For example, for me, it was a great experience being with, with Adam here on the OpenStack, and where there were 7,000 people doing like OpenStack, so cloud solutions. And there, there I realized like how powerful this connection between two communities could be, like doing the hardware and, and doing the, the cloud solutions. So definitely you can expect the, that the alliance will be like driving, driving this and helping to make this uh, things change. And frankly speaking, I have also, let's say, like a, a private reason to do that, because uh, this is like the current situation. We are expecting the third kit, and we will definitely not fit in this little house. Uh, within, so I will need to, to buy or build a, a, in, let's say, next three, four years, a new house. And uh, I would like to ask you to uh, to work together on changing the situation. So my next house is, is really smart. So this is like the question for the, for the following speakers. Like, what can we do together uh, actually to, to change the situation?